morning guys how many of you have seen the movie the lion king yes how many of you are excited for the coming uh 3d not 3d what's it called cgi version next yeah. year a lot okay a lot of people are like no i'm going to go to the you know all right well for those of you who have not seen the lion king spoiler alert Okay, so we'll give you the background of the story. So you've got this king, uh, the Lion King. Okay, his name is Mufasa. And then he was the king and he had a brother, see, Scar. The name is Scar. And Scar, we, we kind of know the story, it's very familiar, right? So see, Scar, he wanted to be the next king after Mufasa. The problem was Simba was born. And because Simba was born, Scar could not get the throne anymore after his brother. Because there's a new heir to the throne. And so his authority or his potential rule became threatened. And so what happened? We kind of know the story, right? He manipulates the situation to get rid of Mufasa and get rid of Simba and then he became the new king. But essentially, he was willing to kill his brother and his nephew just to get power. And that's a very strange story or introduction for our sermon today. <laughs> but we're going to see a big similarity between Scar and Herod and the story today. So we're in a Christmas break. We're not in the book of Acts anymore. We will go back to that next year. We're in our first of our Christmas series. We're revisiting an old story. This is very familiar to us. The, the wise men, the three gifts. But... We hope that even if this is a familiar story, there are a few refreshing new things that we can learn from them. We're going to really talk more about the three gifts, what they mean, and we're going to look at many other themes, but we will focus on this one big theme. Now, disclaimer, it might be a little heavy for a Christmas sermon, but I hope you bear with me. So let's get to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. 2 verse 1 says this, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. So asaman in Bethlehem, or what is Bethlehem? Bethlehem is the place where kings from the line of David comes from. So kibaw nata, we know that kings from the line of David comes from this place and there's a prophecy that the Messiah will come from the line of David and he was born in Bethlehem, then this guy must be the new king, Jesus. In fact, Jeremiah 33, 17 tells us as a prophecy that the line of David will produce the Messiah, the final Messiah, the final king. And we know this king, we know Jesus. Well, we're very familiar with Jesus, diba? Right? We know that Jesus is very loving, he's compassionate, he's firm, and yet he's gracious. He's very challenging in terms of how to follow him, how to understand him, pero at the same time, comforting po. Diba? Right? When people are hard-hearted, mga saba siya. And then when people are repentant and go to him, he will comfort. So we know King Jesus to be a good king. We know King Jesus to be a loving, gracious king. Now, who is Herod? Let's compare the two kings. Herod was from the line of Esau. He was ruthless. He was cunning. In fact, wala ni sa Bible, but if you read just history, to keep his power, Herod killed his own wife and children to stay in power. More si Scar sa Lion King. Diba? So you've got King Jesus, you've got King Herod. Two very opposite kinds of people with two very, very different uh, mindsets. Herod also loved constructing gigantic uh, architectural projects. And the reason why he constructed all those things is to promote himself. Look, ako ni build ana. Look, ako ana ng building. That was my project. This was my achievement. So he loved putting himself above everyone else. Whereas King Jesus came, the Bible says, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. So Christ put himself, puts himself under us to serve us. King Herod was to put himself above everyone. So very, very opposite kings. And then we have the wise men. A little trivia. People think it's three wise men. That's not necessarily true. 
There was probably a whole lot more than three. They just gave three gifts. But there were probably many, many more wise men. These wise men were what we call magi or astrologers. If you want to get the technical term, they were Zoroastrians. So they believed in a religion called Zoroastrianism. It's a very old religion where they were also looking for a messiah. They were waiting for a prophecy to be fulfilled. And they came from Persia. And they read the Hebrew scriptures. Okay, what happened in the past? A little history lang ta. Diba? The Israelites, diba? they were conquered. And then they were became, they were slaves. So katong na slave, na enslaved sila, the Persians and the Hebrews or the Israelites, they lived together. And so the, the Persians, nabasahan po nila ang Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. And they read all the prophecies also. So now, the wise men are waiting for the Jewish Messiah. Because they believe that this Jewish Messiah will be the Messiah for the whole world. So, kasabot sila, kaji sila. So, there are two kinds of people, the I. There is the pro-Jesus and there is the anti-Jesus. Sa story, pro-Jesus, the wise men. Anti-Jesus, si Heron. Sa ato today, I'm sure everyone will think this way. Obviously, I'm pro-Jesus, hello. Diba? That's what's in our minds. Ako dyan ang wise men, ani? Wise man ko. Uh, but before we conclude that, let's wait. Listen first to the whole thing, and then we'll see if we're really pro-Jesus. Okay? Because we can say it in our heads, by yeah, but in our hearts, it's not true. When Jesus was born and the Magi came, they asked, Where is this King of the Jews? Meaning, there's a new ruler. Imagine your Herod. Ayay, king of the Jews. So if there's king of the Jews, there's no more king Herod. Okay, king Jesus naman. So na threaten yung rule. It's kind of like Scarba and he saw Simba was born. Ayay, I have to get rid of this guy. So his reign got threatened. He felt that he was going to be dethroned. And a whole new way of life will start. Intrusive kayo ni si King Jesus na. Samok-samok ni siya sa ako ang rule as king. So he wants to get rid of him. The question is today, are we also ready and excited to have King Jesus to rule over our lives? Are we excited? Do we want Christ to be Lord in all areas of our lives? Or do we say, Pro Jesus, marunta ako, pero naman ko mga things sa akong kinabuhi nga ay, ganahan ko ako ang king. Pwede, Lord Jesus, ay lagsamok sa kanyang area sa akong life. Pwede. So, king ka, pero I'm a little king. Sometimes we do that, no? Sometimes. Many times, actually. Diba? We do that also to ourselves. And then, the, there was a star. So, we look at all the elements first. There was a star. What's the meaning of star? This was probably not a star, more like shooting star or comet. It's probably not like that, ha? This is probably a supernatural event that God produced. Uh, if you look at the Old Testament, remember si Moses, katong he, they, the Israelites were in the desert. They, but they were following a bright flame, a pillar of flame at night. God probably did something to guide the Magis. So if you think about it, Moses was led by a bright light in the desert to get to the promised land. The wise men are led by a bright light in the desert to get to the promised sun. And so we see an, an exact parallel yun, delay. Verse 3, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Ang question, nga na troubled man si Herod? Herod knew what King Jesus meant. Kung na King Jesus, wala na King Herod. Herod counted the cost and hated it. He knew that if Christ would grow up and become king, that his throne would have been threatened. So Herod, how ironic, no? Herod, an enemy of God, knew what lordship meant. He knew what lordship meant better than most professing Christians today. One example, and I don't know if familiar mo aning babay, but there's this very sikat singer. Her, her name is Lauren Daigo. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Uh, she claims to be a 
Christian uh, CCM, Contemporary Christian Music Artist, Composer, Singer. And she was recently interviewed, and she knows how a Christian kuno siya, and her music is played in some churches, kay Christian music kuno. She was asked, do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? This was an interview live. Not recorded, ha? Live. Her answer. Money ang answer. I can't honestly answer that. In a sense, I have too many people that I love that are homo that they are homosexual. I don't know. I actually had a conversation with someone last night about it. I can't say one way or the other. I'm not God. So when people ask questions like that, that's my go-to. I just say, read the Bible and find out for yourself. And when you find out, let me know. Because I'm learning too. That's her answer. Here's the thing. She either does not know, really does not know, and if she does not know, stop writing Christian music. It's kind of like an engineer saying, I don't really know about physics, but I'll build your bridges. That's dangerous, right? So if, you, if she really does not know, then stop calling yourself a Christian artist. If she did know, then she was compromising. But either way, there's a problem, agree? Here's the weird thing. She said, I actually had a conversation with someone last night about it. So she knew that she was going on a radio talk show. She knew that this host always asks tough questions. She knew this was going to be part of the topic. She had a conversation just last night. You didn't research. You didn't Google Bible verses on this. You didn't even just consider, I need to be prepared. Well, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, 1 Timothy 1 verse 10, Romans chapter 1. So many verses on this. What about us today? We don't compromise like her, but we compromise in many other ways. We have friends who have lifestyles we know is against the Lord and who profess to be Christians, and we justify them. We've, I've used this example before, and this might cut a few people, but I have some... And I, I have gay... Friends, I have people in my life who I love very dearly who are gay. And I will tell them straight, that's not God's will for you. That's dangerous for you. It will hurt you. It will hurt others. It hurts the Lord. And it will, it will eventually lead you to an eternity with the wrath of God that's dangerous. But most of the time, if you have barkada who are gays, what do we say? We call them die. Diba? Die, die, die. We treat them like girls, ba? The, the guys who want to be girls, we treat them like girls good. The girls who want to be guys, we call them bro. What's happening? We're affirming their lifestyle. What Lauren Daigo said, that's a lot of the a lot of the times we do that too. You see, the thing is, you will recognize lordship because it is visibly different from the world. You will recognize lordship. Because it is visibly different from the world. We will know it. We will see it. Now look at verse 5. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Think about it, ha? Huh? The wise men asked, where is this king who will be born? The scribes and Pharisees of Herod are the ones who answered them in Bethlehem. So they knew. The scribes and Pharisees of Herod knew. There are two of your signs. Number one, a star. You can't miss a moving star at night. Today we can miss it because we have skyscrapers and lights and buildings. Right? We don't look at the nighttime sky. No? But if you lived in Israel during this time where there's no skylights, there's no airplanes passing, you see the stars shine very brightly. And when you see a moving star, wouldn't you follow it? Wouldn't you be curious? So one, obvious, the star. Second, the prophecy. So they knew. Essentially, people know the truth. Kabaw manta. Common sense alone, we know it, man. We just suppress it. I'm going to read to you a text. You don't have to go there. Let me just read it. It's in Romans chapter 1, verse 18. It says this, 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. There's, there's this heart that knows the truth, pero di mo ganahan, so isuppress na lang ako. In other words, in denial. He continues in verse 19, For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely, his eternal power, divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their understanding and their foolish hearts were darkened. In other words, it's obvious that God created everything. You know why? Because you cannot possibly believe that nothing multiplied by nobody equals everything you see. We all know this. Life cannot come from non-life. Science knows this. And yet, people suppress the truth. They don't want the truth because the truth is painful and inconvenient. Kind of like Herod and all Jerusalem who got troubled. And if you think about it, they all got troubled. Why? Because when Jesus comes as Lord, it, he will be intrusive in your life. I used to do things a certain way. For example, lang, if, if let's say you're working and naikanabit ang mga resibo resibo nga ipar reimburse and then you get money out of it and then personal nagani ni mo, imo inun nga, no, it's from the company. And you, you know, so you're essentially what's happening is you're stealing from the company, right? You, you're stealing from the company. When Jesus comes, he'll convict you of that and say, that's theft, that's wrong. The Holy Spirit will grip your heart and it's intrusive and it will change how you live. Ayay, wana ko extra money. But it's actually from theft. How we do business, under the table things, uh, you know, those tricks of the trade, kay gubirin mo, inana na. When Jesus comes, we can't do those certain things as Christians. And I know because I'm in business. I don't say this lightly. It's painful. It's tiring. It's frustrating. You feel like you're being exploited by the government. But we pay taxes. It's intrusive in our lives. King Jesus will change how you live because that's lordship. Herod understood and hated it. How about us? You see, suppression of the truth is systematic. Systematic because people find ways to make it effective. Conscious pud na. Habang man sila, they know man. In denial lang. And it's usually by crowns. Peer pressure ba? Okay, if we suppress the truth by ourselves, lain man. But when we say, oh, sila manggani, sila manggani, sila mantanan. That's normal. That's how the world works. I don't want to be different from the world. Oh, then di ka Christian. Because Christianity is about being different from the world. So there are two kinds of people. There are truth seekers and there are truth suppressors. Those who seek the truth, those who suppress it. Verse 7. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. So they knew there was a star. They'd been looking at it. They knew. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too might come and worship him. So, nag sinikrito na siya. Hey, wise men, when you find the child, ina ko ha, secretly, let me know. I want to worship him, ang good. But actually, he wants to get there and just kill the baby. And we know the story, di ba? When Jesus finally fled to fled from, the, the, from Herod, what did Herod do? He ordered all babies, two years old and below, to be murdered. Para, I can't find him, I'll make sure na lang ko. I would kill all these babies just so that I keep my lifestyle. This sounds like abortion in the United States. Diba? So, we know the story. It's the same today. People still intentionally look for ways to discredit God, to remove Jesus, to remove truth so we can continue living our own way. And you're probably thinking, sakita sa dalima Christmas sermon. Ay, diba ni Merry Christmas? <laughs> but, you know what? We need to hear this. Because it's Christmas. Christmas is supposed to be about Christ and His kingship, His lordship as King Jesus. It's not about us and our gifts. So, 
For this Christmas, we need to focus on Him, di ba? And what King Jesus wants from us, not what we want from Santa. So, we have to take a look at this. We intentionally look for ways to discredit the scriptures. So, what do non-Christians and what do some Christians do? For the non-Christians, they'll say there's no God. There's no God, oy. Binuang mana, tuo juga ana, no God, oy. For the Christians, they will misinterpret the Bible. Non-Christians reject the Bible. Christians misinterpret the Bible. If non-Christians say there's no God, Christians will echo Satan. Did God really say? Remember Adam and Eve in the garden? Diba yung sigad, don't eat the fruit, ha? Tumbag sa snake, did God really say? And that's what Christians do. They look at the Bible, does God really say this? Di siguro, eh? It must mean something different, eh? Because I want to keep my lifestyle, man. And so what did Herod do? He summoned the wise men secretly. In other words, there's no transparency, there's no accountability, a secret secret lang. And he pretended to be a worshiper, but actually, he wanted to keep his own interests. And there's a lot of people today who are not real Christians. They're fake Christians. They're not real. They're pretending just to use Christians and they will use cunning and ruthless tactics, just like Herod, to keep their own lifestyle. And you know why they're so confident? Think of this one. See, Herod, confident man siya, di ba? Confident siya to ask the wise men, in Nakubi, where? He was confident that the wise men would believe him. He was confident that he could deceive these wise men. And many false preachers today are also confident because they know that most professing Christians today have no discernment. In Romans chapter 1, verse 31, the one I read kanina, the word foolish, they were foolish, that word in the Greek, you know what that Greek word is, foolish? It means undiscerning. It means undiscerning. So what the Bible says is this, those who are undiscerning, kanang sigilag pailad, sigilag pailad, sigilag pailad, they're not saved, ha? These aren't sheep who are just deceived. The Bible says they're full, they're undiscerning, and they receive the wrath of God. So, it's a very, very important thing that people have discernment. I'll give you one example. There's this guy, his name is Peter Popov. Kailan mo? Wala siguro, kay taga-US man to siya. Pero maro ni si Peter Popov. He knows how to deceive. So, in ano yan, style, healer kuno siya, miracle healer ba? Faith healer. O niya, he will set up a crowd. O niya, magpada siya mga tao sa crowd. Kunwari, mo attend. For actually, be good. Part na siyang group. And the people in the crowd will talk to you. Oh, ngano na makadiri? O sa'yo mong pag-pray ng miracle? Tumutubagsad ka, di ba? Ano ako diri? Let's just pretend. Na sakit ako ang tiyan. Or or na ako'y chronic headache. Every day ko mag-headache. Mau ba? Ako diri ko para ana-ana. So, hinumdum na tanan. Paghawa ninyo, they list them all down. Ilan ang ilis ka? Ang gaya nga naka-red nga jacket, nga nakaputi nga kalo, chronic headache, everyday magka-headache. Ang nananapod siya, ilahin nga kasabot din to. Lady in a green sweater, ang iyang problema, kay iyang neighbor, sige lang silang away. So, ilis ka na nila. And then, when Peter Popov goes on the stage, na siya ka ng mag-microphone, pero actually na receiver din. Iyang wife na sa likod, sa backstage ba? Na na siya ilis ka. And the wife will say, will dictate to him, Person, red jacket, white hat, right side, money and prayer. So, mag-acting-acting din siya. I hear from the Lord. Huh? On this side, on this side, nakasense kong headache, nakasense kong headache. So, mga tao, gubiha, you in the red jacket, oh, siya, oh, kabahogin siya. Actually, gireport to sa kasabwat. This big, this guy, nasakpan siya because the, the, in the US, naman yung investigate of fraud. Nasakpan siya, kaya nahin ni Daog ka ng musakay o radio ba, radio signal, na dumog ang wife, naghatag o info. Exposed yun. But until now, he's still out there. Same old tricks. People are still believing, still giving money to him, still listening to him. Until now. Kaya wala lagi discernment. Christian ko no, pero no discernment. They don't know the Bible. In fact, this was so uh, famous, a movie was made about this. If you don't know the movie, it stars Steve Martin. It's entitled Leap of Faith. You watch that. Steve Martin, the comedian. That's the danger of not having discernment. That's why we're in May 28. I'm going to bring this up again. Next year, Justin Peters is coming to Cebu. 
We're hosting him. He's going to have a lecture on discernment. How to know truth from falsehood. Okay, important kayo ni. We have to address it. There's so many fakeness out there. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Bethel and the gold dust from the... the Kaba mong butang a fake ng gold dust good? Kaba mong butang mapalit na sa national bookstore for how much? Pag machine, gold dust, let it play, uh, let it dry. Uh, pretend da yun ka. We know this to be to be not true. It's as fake as WWE wrestling. Kanang wrestling ba? Kanang, di ba? Si The Rock, di ba? You know the only difference? When we watch wrestling, we know it's fake. And we enjoy the fakeness. We laugh. But when it comes to Christianity, a lot of people don't even think it's fake. Ang katong, the, the fake healings ba? So, we have to really address it. Just like Herod is trying to deceive the wise men, God warned them. We have to warn people too. Verse 9. After listening to the king, meaning, nagstirigid sila, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream, not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Look at the interesting thing about this. Na ay mga truth seekers, na ay mga pro-King Jesus, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Di ba mo redundant? Rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Sabi ni saya pa, ni celebrate sila kaayo nga, daghan kaayo celebration nga grabi kaayo. <laughs> In other words, they were very happy. While Herod was the entire time anxious. You find it ironic ba, no? King siya, pero anxious siya. Wise men, travelers, rejoice, joyful. How is it? People who have nothing are so happy. A king who has everything is angry. Isn't that foolish? The only difference? Jesus. The wise man had Jesus. King Herod did not. The true response to Jesus is first and foremost worship. And not just any kind of worship, huh? It is the kind of worship the way that God wants to be worshipped. Remember, uh, Romans chapter 1, I didn't read everything, but if we read verses 21 to 22, it says it here. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God. And then it says, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Again, on a discerning, fools, and discerning. But what does this mean? They knew God. They didn't honor Him as God. In other words, ako magbuot how I want to honor God. God says, worship me this way. Ako to bagdi ko eh. I will worship you my way. God, ikay mo dawat sa kind of worship ako mihatag. Kaya ikaw may tigdawat din eh. Di man ako. Ako budang giver. Di ba? Beggars can't be choosers. Wow. Si God pa ang dapat ay salamat sa imong worship ha. I really don't like how you did it pero thank you honey. Worship di hapon ka. No, that's not God. We have to worship God the way He wants to be worshipped. Because He's God. We have to honor Him as God. Not as a beggar of our worship. Na siya pa ang magpasalamat nato. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. That's what happens to us when we think we can choose how we want to worship God. We think we're so wise. This is how God wants to be worshipped. How do you know? Feel lang nako. Huh? Wow. And God said in His Word how He wants to be worshipped. Mona. So how does God want to be worshipped? Big question. Look at the gifts they gave. And this is, they gave Him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What are these? When you read it, gold, I know what gold is. Frankincense, what am I say Frankenstein monster? <laughs> these are what we call prophetic gifts. So, let me explain something real quick. In the Old Testament, man, God, there's a king, a priest, a prophet. A king is someone who governs the land, di ba? King. The priest, siya mo offer of sacrifice for the people. The prophet is the one who speaks to them for God. 
So the king goes to the prophet and says, Hey prophet, what does God want me to do as king? So the prophet will tell him, Oh, mo na yung nahitabo si mong kingdom, ang ginoo, di ganahan ana. So namo yung nabuhat sayop. So the king says, Hala, nasayop, Demi, sorry kayo. What should we do? And then the priest comes in, Ako bahala ana. Okay? We will do worship, we will sacrifice to the Lord according to His will, and as God forgives us, God will speak to the prophet again and will tell us what to do. Ikaw, king, ikaw mo execute anak. Do you see that? That's how it worked. No person, no one person held all three positions at the same time. Ever. Except Jesus. Jesus is king, priest, and prophet. So the gold represents Jesus as king. But not just any king. Gold magod represents deity. So gold here represents the human and divine nature of Christ. Being God and man. As divine being, as God, King Jesus does not need prophets because he is God. So immediately we have gold to represent king and prophet. Because he's God. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 says, Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to us, to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So no need ng prophets. So king prophet, check na sa gold. What about frankincense? Frankincense is uh, a kind of uh, aromatic. Okay? Talang, you know, when ganahan ta nga, mo smell ka something nice, mag perfume. So, in Exodus chapter 30, verse 34 to 35, ang priest, when he gives an offering, he uses frankincense para delicate, maho ba na ang, when you kill an animal to sacrifice it, maho yun, di ba? So, para dili man maho o dead animals, they put something there. That's the frankincense as well. So, the role of the priest is to represent the people to God and make a pleasing sacrifice to God in behalf of the people. So, this represents Jesus being priest. Essentially, what does the priest in the Old Testament do? He gets a, a, an animal, he kills the animal, prepares it, he prepares himself, he goes to the temple, to the Holy of Holies, and here's the big question. The one question he will ask, is this sacrifice enough? Will God accept this sacrifice? I really hope so. Okay, kung di mo sagot si God sa sacrifice, pagtay mo ng whole nation, judgment man sila, so, muna yung hope, I hope this is enough. And you wonder ba, the whole nation, think about it for a moment, ha? the whole nation doing corruption, sin, patay diri, patay din to. You know, people are defrauding one another. And God says, I will forgive all of you, just give me a goat. Will that make sense? Think of all the corruption in the Philippines, for example. Corruption alone. Now, think of all the injustice. Think of all the bad stuff that we do as a country. Can you imagine God saying, I will forgive the whole nation of the Philippines, all I want, caldereta. That makes light of our sin, di ba? Kaldirin, para di katapat, sayo na na day, oy. Mag-ihaw to every day. That's not the point of the sacrifice. The point of the sacrifice is God is saying, this is not enough. You do these sacrifices because one day, there will be a lamb that will come from me and that will be the perfect sacrifice. Trailer lang ni. Now, if that is the question, if that is the big question, Jesus is unique in the sense that not only is he gold, so king and prophet, frankincense, not just a priest who represents his people, but there's myrrh. M-Y-R-R-H, myrrh. Okay, so what is myrrh? What does it symbolize? Myrrh is unique. And Jesus is also unique because Jesus takes one more role. Everyone else before king, priest, prophet, Jesus took the fourth role. Jesus is king, priest, prophet, sacrifice. That's what the myrrh is for. The myrrh is what you place in a dead body para dili siya mo baho, dili siya mo decay right away. Today, we use formalin. Di ba? Sa mga morgue. That's their myrrh. In fact, myrrh is also a stupefying agent. In Mark chapter 15, verse 23, remember, Jesus was offered a kind of wine with a mixture of something para before, uh, when he was on the cross. It's a mixture of some wine and some myrrh. 
So this gift is prophetic of his crucifixion and his death. He was not just king, priest, prophet, he was also a sacrifice, the sacrifice. When we think of Christmas, we think of a baby, we think of how nice it is. We don't think of how morbid Christmas really is. Because Christ is a baby born to die for us. Now, why do I bring this up? Why, why is this so important? Well, I bring it up, or we bring it up, because we live in, in a nation that is super religious, okay? And I know this because I used to be super religious also. I did my confessions every day on high school. No, not every day, Monday to Friday, because now my free confession sa, sa among school, just with man. So I confessed every day. Katundili uh, namada, I went every day for communion, and then mo confess ko once a week. My confession was always two yellow pad pages long. Inana. And I would dutifully do all the prayers, all the tanan. As in, like, strict to good. Pero, kabaw na ka, diba? You feel religious, and then the next day, tubo sungay. And then, confess na sad. Sorry na sad. Tubo na sad sungay. And I wondered, well, when will this be enough? Nga naman eh. And Christmas pag yun, people get extra religious. Diba? We see the bilin in the houses, manggawas ta rin mga design, di ba? Or, in Tagalog is bilin. In Bisaya, I heard it's called a uh, pasungan. Di ba? Like, you see the little, little manger, ha? di ba? And the wise men. It looks very beautiful. And there's nothing, we're not saying that's evil, okay? But what we're saying is this. Why is it we're so religious one month of the year and then we live like practical atheists for 11 months? Because in the end, there is no different from an atheist and a religious person. You know why? What does the atheist say? If na ay God, if there's a God, Sharo, he will judge me. I'm so good. I'm so moral. I do so many good things. I judge ko niya, gabiho. That's what the atheist says. The religious person says the same thing. Sharo, I judge ko ni God. Ka-religious na ko. Both of them are doing exactly what the priest did. They go to God with a sacrifice and they say, is this sacrifice enough? That's all that they're doing. It's the same thing. You are essentially trying to be your own priest to represent yourself to the creator of the whole universe and you think your good deeds is the perfect sacrifice instead of Christ, the lamb who was slain. That's really what's happening. Deep down, we know the truth that salvation cannot be received or earned by works. We know this. Think about it for a moment, Langwood. Zoom out. Think of planet Earth and then the, the, the other planets. I don't know the order. And then imagine the sun. You zoom out, Pagyud, Milky Way, diba? And you zoom out, Pagyud. I don't know what's out there now. But just use your imagination. Keep zooming out. The God of the entire universe and you talking. And you say, here are my good deeds, God of the universe who made everything. This should satisfy you. Wow, huh? What did you really make? Nothing. And so what happens is we ma-reveal atong pride. That's why Christianity is not about good works. It's about God doing the work for us, sending us the perfect sacrifice. Why do we good deeds as Christians? Not because we want to earn salvation, but because we believe that God saved us through His Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And because of that, we do good deeds na. Because we're so grateful. Pasalamat na lang ni. Christianity is not a religion of works to earn salvation. You know what it is? Christianity, what it really is? Christianity is a religion of works because of gratefulness. Thankfulness. That's really it. But when we don't have substance, we replace it with symbolism. When we don't have a reality of Christ dying on the cross for our sins, when it's not real to us, no, we are already forgiven, we dress it up with so many symbolism, so, many, so much religiosity, and in the end, we will be just as anxious as Herod. We will still think this way. I wonder if my goodies will ever be enough. Anxious. And when lordship comes, I don't want lordship. And it's a foolish thing. Why? Because I'm anxious. I don't want lordship. 
I don't want to submit myself to Jesus. I will, I will worship God the way I want, the way I choose. I will make my own worship for God. God, you should accept it, ha? But deep down, we know, man, God, we can't push God to accept our own worship. It has to be under His terms. So what do we do? We get anxious na food. Hala, maybe it's not enough. And so we add more to our own works. And then we get more anxious. It's like you're diabetic and you eat more sugar and you think the more sugar you eat, the more you will save yourself from diabetes. And you're anxious, oh, I should eat more sugar, but I know it's killing me. But I should eat more para lang masave ko. That's how foolish it is. Undiscerning, dangerous. So, why do we come to this? Why did we choose this for a Christmas series? Because in the first place, Christmas is about Christ, not about us. The Lion King, the movie, it's not really about Scar. Right? When we watch Lion King, we know Scar is the bad guy. That's you and me many times in the story. We're not Mufasa. We're not Simba. We're Scar. And so when we look at Christmas, it's not about us. Don't think of the gifts. Don't think of, ah, Christmas na. Dapat, ano, dapat madawat. I hope I get this. I hope I get that. What about this? For this Christmas, ask yourself this one question. Lord Jesus, you are King. You came to earth to be king. And here's the question. Lord, am I worshiping you rightly? Just this Christmas, I'll make it about you, not me, Lord. How am I worshiping you? Are you pleased with your, my worship? Or am I worshiping you, claiming to be wise in my own eyes, but in the end, sayo pi To conclude, Christmas, we have decoration. Natay mga bile, natay pasungan, natay mga Christmas songs. We, we sang Christmas carols today. And those are really great. But let's go back to the first event. First event is that Jesus came as king and he demands lordship. He demands that we count the cost. Si Herod, he was anxious, he was rebellious, he was fearful, but he wanted to stick to his own self as king. The Magi, they rejoiced. You want to rejoice? We all want to rejoice, right? Later party, count. Uh, you know, we'll have lunch, so rejoice. But I hope so rejoicing, you're still thinking, hmm, if I'm rejoicing now, it's a party, it's a celebration of life. I want life after death. I want to celebrate, well, we're celebrating a birthday also later, but I want to celebrate an afterlife with the Lord Jesus. So what am I supposed to do? Not work for your salvation. You know what you're supposed to do? Jesus says it's very simple. Just believe and repent. More did not. What is repent? To turn away from my sins. To believe is to simply believe. What does believe mean? Lang. Is that simple? Yes. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Make a, I'm not saying your decision will save you, but settle it in your mind. Make a settlement in your mind once and for all for the rest of your life. My salvation does not depend on my works. Not my good deeds, not my moral living. My salvation depends on what Jesus did on the cross. And then how do you know if you're truly saved? You'll notice a change. There's a recognizable change in your heart. It will be weird, but it will be great. Weird and great. It will be weird, but it's great because you begin to crave God's word. You go to the Lord, my Lord, sorry, dear Lord, I will believe in you. I trust you from now on. Ikaw lang yun. The next morning, you wake up. Nag-crave lagi ko Bible. Ano man ko? Mas marang nakaon. Sige na lang, basa Bible. Later on, when there's a temptation, there's this part of you, nga masakit na, marag, iyay, marag, di naman yung maong sa una. Proud, makay ko nga, hubong kay kustanan. Proud kay ko nga, pagka New Year, next day lagi, I don't even remember New Year. I don't even remember 2018. Diba? And then, later on, you start to realize, I don't, I don't enjoy this na lagi. This, uh, dili siya, I don't enjoy kay Tiguang na ko. Lahi. Ha? Ang mga, I don't know. It's not, I don't enjoy this because Tiguang na ko. It's rather, I don't enjoy this because this doesn't please my Lord. This doesn't please King Jesus. And He's my King now. I have a relationship with Jesus now. Muna na good na mga single. Once na na uyab, conscious na kayo. Di ko mabuha na ba? Nga naman. Uyab mang good. Ha? Diba? Or, akong asawa, man, good, dili mo appreciate, anak, nga, I do this, nga, she knows, nga. It's the relationship with King Jesus that changes your heart. That's how you'll know. 
So I guess we can end by just asking this. There are two kinds of people in the world, pro-Jesus or anti-Jesus. Truth seekers or truth suppressors. Do we have substance or do we have symbolism? Either we constantly seek Jesus Christ through Bible, through prayer, through going to doctrinally sound churches, churches that will preach to you the gospel. Kani karon ka ba mo ko hapdos hapdos ni gamay? Pero necessary imagine ni kay Christmas man, you know. So do we do we surround ourselves with friends who constantly remind us of our relationship with the Lord? What are good nag if you're married or nakai oyab? There are two kinds of friends, man. The friends who will say, "Bye, okay, na bye." Wow, bitaw siya kibaw. There's that kind of friend, and there's the other kind of friend who says, "Bye, ayana, bye." What will your wife think? Gabi ha good, right? In the same way, are, are we surrounded with our friends who will say, "Bro, what would the Lord Jesus feel if you did this?" Do we surround ourselves with those kinds of friends, or okay, na oy, bye, 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 di ba? Think about that. Are we are we doing all these things? Do we surround ourselves with God's word, or are we constantly suppressing the truth by compromising, by misinterpreting Scripture, by relying on our outward symbolism? And in the end, we're still anxious. What are we gonna celebrate? Because at the end of the day, there's a there's a phrase that he said. He said, "He will shepherd my people, Israel." Do you want to be king? Or do you want to be shepherd then? Do you want to rule? Ganahan ba ka ikaw mo rule? Or ganahan ba ka nga the Lord Jesus, King Jesus, loving, gracious, kind, compassionate, comforting, will rule over you? I'd rather be shepherd then. I would rather that Jesus ruled over me. Because in the end, I don't want to represent myself before the King of the universe. I don't want to bring my good deeds and bring it to God and say, accept this. Rather, I want to sit on the sides and I want Jesus to get in front of the Father and say, "I have spoken for Him." You can either represent yourself or you can be spoken for by Christ. That's the choice. So today, to end, we're going to sing a song, the the final song. This song is very short. It's entitled "The First Noel," and Noel. Means or Emmanuel means God with us. Okay, so the song is going to be short, but the introduction uh, instrumental is quite long because I put verses or we put verses there. So please read the verses first and meditate on the verses. So when you sing the song, you understand what it means. That when Jesus was born, He came to be with us, to fellowship with us, to reconcile us with Himself, so that we have relationship with Him. Okay, so I'm going to end with prayer and then we're going to sing our, our last song.